Dennis White sent us this really intriguing video question about HDMI. Take it away, Dennis. Hi, this is Dino's Place, and my question is, why was HDMI invented? Why not just use fiber optic cables for uh, video and audio? Wouldn't that be a better connection? Thanks. Thank you, Dennis. Well, the design goal of HDMI in the first place was to be compatible with DVI. That's the first digital video connection that many of us were exposed to. And the founders of HDMI, that included some of the biggest names in consumer electronics like Panasonic, Sony, Toshiba, Philips, Hitachi, that group realized it was just as important that they have the support of the studios and the people who own the content when creating a new standard. Basically, it had to be a secure connection. But why, why copper instead of light? I mean, you know, your, yeah. your, your digital audio connection, most of the spin-ups out there. Are... There really is no technical reason why it couldn't have been a fiber cable used as the primary transport in consumer home theater, but such a system would need to have HDMI's low unit cost. Mm -hmm. uh, the port on an H for HDMI on a typical product is about four cents to license that. It also, more, most importantly, they need to have a secure data transport and a standardized interface, which you could say that is a standard. TOSLink is a standardized interface that's used for that. There are products that will convert the HDMI, the copper, right. to fiber and then back on the other end. Most so of them run really long distances. Super, yeah, super long runs. And arguably, you could also say, why didn't we all just switch to SDI that uses a, was a secure, you know, serial digital interface right. that uses your standard coaxial style cable. They'd have to run HDCP over. That's the thing, there is, in that standard, there really is no copy protection. It's designed right. for broadcasters and internal use where it's like we're just moving around. Fat, uncompressed video. Literally. Mostly because a bunch of people were in a room and they liked this particular packaging and they didn't like this particular packaging and so they went bada boom, bada bing, we'll do it this way. Yeah, and, and like we were talking about too, DVI is really where it started. They wanted something that would be backward compatible with that. Hence, we've got these great little cheap adapters that'll convert your, your DVI cable to HDMI and vice versa. Granted that with DVI you don't have audio. But well, there is a nice crossover also with computers, right? Because totally. computers, you know, the HDMI, you can do HDMI from the DVI out. So that actually, that actually does make sense. I mean, that's a, it had its computer, computer origin. consumer electronic smirging. I mean, if we would have let the video engineers do it, it probably everything would be using cheap fiber or RF cable or, to everything. Right. And it'd be nice to have fiber. I'm a big fan of you The know, cable would light. be cheap, but it would be like eight bucks or 50 bucks for the you know, thing you plug it into on your. But you've got to have the secure player. pathway, the, the protected storage, protected transport, protected display, just to make the content owners happy. They could have done that inside. I think yeah, they, I don't know. they probably just didn't think optical cable was going to scale as well as HDMI cable in terms of, of pricing going down. You know, that might, that's my theory. Back in the day, I would say that's a good argument. But nowadays, you realize that those cables are, I don't know if it's as cheap as fiber, but it's pretty. Uh, Pretty close. So maybe when we get to our, our, our next generation HDTVs, they'll start bringing in that optical HDMI. Wireless. Everything wireless. Yeah. No, maybe, maybe not. Dream.